Hello Summoners and welcome back to another episode of OP Pick or Ban. Make sure to watch this video all the way through, that way you're better prepared to win more of your games on patch 9.18. We're only one patch away from Worlds, so we don't expect any crazy changes. Fingers crossed, that is. There's some familiar faces in this new episode, along with some new ones, so stay tuned. Make sure to let us know down below if you have any comments or feedback, which video you want to see us make next, and if you think we missed any champions. Otherwise, we want to know this, which season of League was your favorite? But before we get started, make sure to go to ProGuides.com if you want to see huge improvements in your rank. We upload video guides like this one every single day on our website, and as of now, we're currently uploading a challenger gameplay analysis guide for every single champ, so make sure to click that link below. Also, we have an exclusive feature called Play with a Pro, which provides instant on-demand, 24-7 coaching from the best of the best. Trust me guys, you don't want to miss out on this, so sign up today. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into it. Our first pick is Kled, marking his fifth appearance in a row. Seriously guys, this champion is so strong for solo queue, and I've been finding a lot of success on him myself, and he definitely feels broken. While he may have mixed results in competitive play, he is being played, and that does say something. Off of the competitive stage, he's an absolute monster, and you need to pick him up or ban him. Although we've explained why he's so good in our other episodes, we will reiterate it once again. Kled has a lot of power in lane and out of it as well. He has a ton of kill pressure, is a great roamer, and is arguably one of the strongest initiators in the game after level 6. While he wasn't too strong of a pick on release, Pantheon did make the cut as a suggested ban. This time, however, Pantheon's appearance holds its worth on both ends as a pick and a ban. Last patch, Pantheon received a buff to his Q, extending its execute bonus to its thrust. This seemingly small buff was huge, and he's now stopping his adversaries like the warrior he was destined to be. He's a lane bully, excellent at diving, and able to roam to other lanes, making him a solo queue killing machine. It's really difficult to beat Pantheon in lane. He has a stun and is able to block damage with his E, so trying to trade aggressively versus him is very difficult unless you can bait out his abilities. On the other hand, when Pantheon wants to play aggressive, he threaten kills everyone when his opponents are quite healthy, as long as he has enough room in lane to run them down. Down. Something to remember is that his Q thrust can also apply a slow from his passive's bonus. Tapping Q halves the cooldown, so it's pretty realistic to get two or even three Qs when trying to chase enemies. Our next pick is Jax. He's a staple pick for solo queue and is a superstar not without good reason either. In spite of being very simple, Jax is an effective champion to carry games with. Not only is he relatively strong, but very oppressive to play versus when he starts to snowball. Part of why Jax is so strong is because of the items that he builds. Trinity Force and Spear of Sojin are such good items on him. With them, he's able to spam his jump and counter strike, making him impossible to beat in 1v1s and almost impossible to run away from. This also equips him with carrying teamfights and ability to deal insane damage, while also soaking a great amount of damage with Counter-Strike and the ultimate. In lane, Jax isn't someone you can totally bat an eye to either because his passive allows him to ramp up attack speed and he can naturally max out Conqueror pretty quickly. This makes all-in and extended trading with him very potent. If you can't play someone who excels in shorter trades or can kite Jax around with ease, you'll probably need to throw a ban at him. Jax is a popular but strong pick, so don't feel bad about needing to throw your ban at him if he's your kryptonite. Alright, next up, let's talk about the jungle. Lee Sin received a small buff this patch that should be enough for mains and enthusiasts to start pushing his win rate upwards. Although the base 1 AD and 25 damage to his ultimate might seem quite small, it's a really nice buff. For bonus HP though, okay, we'll admit that one isn't significant 99% of the time, but who knows, maybe you'll randomly survive with 1 HP. The reason that the slight buff to his AD is impactful is because of how many auto attacks Lee Sin usually gets off when fighting. As a result of his passive, he gains bonus attack speed for his next two autos, and in almost any situation, he's able to auto at least twice, and in several other situations, situations, he can get anywhere from 4 to 6. If you add this in with his ultimate buff, it makes more sense that the extra damage could really come in clutch at all stages of the game. Less times where your enemy gets away with 1 HP means less tilt and more snowball. Lee Sin's versatility, safety, and high AD ratios make him a strong pick. All of these attributes allow him to snowball effectively and carry with his playmaking potential. With Conqueror especially, he's able
able to take advantage of his passive and insanely high AD ratios. Hopefully these buffs are enough so that we see him a little bit at Worlds, because after all, who doesn't like watching a clean Lee Sin? Kha'Zix is back again with this patch because he's just too freaking strong. He does so much damage and bursts his opponents very quickly. This makes it really difficult to play against him because your window to counter him is just so small. There is a lot that Kha'Zix can do. He can make picks, skirmish versus isolated targets, and also secure neutral objectives. Depending on which abilities he evolves first, he's also able to specialize in something and play towards that strength. Most notably, his Q Evolve and W Evolve are excellent choices when you pull ahead. His Evolve Q allows him to win 1v1 fights and quickly take Dragon, Rift Herald, or Baron, and his Evolve W allows him to heavily slow his foes and pick them off. We don't really have much else to say about him, his most notable trait is burst damage. It really is that big of a deal, so make sure to take advantage of it. This patch, Evelyn receives some buffs to her ultimate, making her execute more reliable. Evelyn, just like Kha'Zix, is already at a pretty decent power level and for the same reason. Our favorite thing about League is damage. Aside from neutral objective pressure, Evelyn's strengths are very similar to Kha'Zix's. She excels at bursting foes and picking off enemies, and while her 1v1 isn't as reliable, she's still able to one-shot any opponent when she starts to pull ahead. Stealth is a natural part of her kit after level 6, so it enables her to be much more creative with her ganks. It's practically impossible to see an Evelyn gank coming from the river, and when playing versus one, you have to deep ward, but most lower elo players aren't going to take the time to push for them. You can always hide in the side lanes as Evelyn and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Whenever enemies overextend or misposition, make sure to capitalize on it by one-shotting them and turning their screen gray. Alright, let's move on to the mid lane. Fizz is still dominant. Yeah, there's a lot of repeats in this episode, but it's impossible for us to not mention them when they're so strong. In the case of Fizz, he's absolutely demolished the mid lane meta last patch with an astounding 52% win rate and over 100,000 games played. High win rate and high sample size reflect how potent Fizz is at carrying games right now. He is safe from ganks with his E and also has a lot of kill pressure in lane. Out of lane, Fizz is able to pick off opponents with his ultimate and use his E or Zhonya's to stall for time. Since he's so slippery, punishing him is extremely difficult, and it's really frustrating when you can't. Make sure to also take advantage of Fizz's ability to effectively tower dive. He can drop turret aggro with his E, so save it till the end of a dive to avoid a final turret shot. Later on in the game, make sure to sweep for vision and look for a max range shark. It's pretty much impossible to survive after getting hit by one and Fizz can hard carry with this ability alone and burst down misposition targets. Next up is Malzahar. He's held a 52% or higher win rate for months now. He dumbs down so many things. You can make a giant impact on the game by just pressing two buttons. Seriously, Malzahar win games by pressing flash and R. With his E, Malzahar is pretty good at permashoving waves as well, especially once he finishes Lost Chapter. By running Teleport, he's able to reliably scale during the laning phase and also make side lanes play with it later on. Malzahar's passive makes it very difficult to gank him, and his ultimate makes you a potential victim anytime his jungler is nearby. If your goal is to win more games and climb, you really need to pick up Malzahar because of how simple, yet strong he really is. While he does have short range, CC and Simplicity are usually much stronger tools in solo queue. We want to make an honorable mention to Annie as well. While it's uncertain if she'll be OP across all elos, Annie mains and lower elo players are likely ecstatic to see the changes she received this patch on her E. To summarize, she doesn't block as much damage anymore, but she gains a burst of movement speed that decays over time when she casts it. Movement speed is one of the most crucial stats on Annie because it's the only way that she will ever reach her targets. She doesn't have any dashes or gimmicks, so her only options are either to run it down or flash on her enemies. Like Malzahar though, Annie is very simple to execute and has reasonably high burst damage. With the bonus movement speed, she's a much stronger pick out of lane now as well because she'll be able to gank side lanes more effectively and also be able to position herself better in fights without the need for Shirelias. Alright, let's throw it down bot. Following nerfs to prevalent picks like Kai'Sa and Zaya, Jinx is left unscathed. She's already dominating solo queue with an absurd 53% win rate and an astounding play rate. We've mentioned her in many of our other videos, so we'll try to keep this one short. While Jinx is a late game hyper carry, players can be rewarded for well executed aggression. Because of her high damage, traps, and her W, Jinx actually punishes her foes very hard. Especially with aggressive support combos, Jinx's abilities naturally center energize and allow her to follow up on engages. She's one of the strongest laners if she's able to fight on her own terms. The issue is that this can be hard since she's immobile and has difficulty looking for shorter trades. Out of lane, well, she's just honestly OP. She boasts some of the highest DPS and range in the game and has a reset mechanic built into her passive, and in games where teamfights and snowballing is very common, Jinx is able to take advantage of her kit and hard carry games. 
Our second bot lane pick is Caitlyn. She received a small AD buff this patch, which should help her dominate her lane a bit harder. Zaya and Kaisa also have received nerfs because they scaled well, while being also sizable threats during laning phase. To counter this, as well as other picks, Riot is buffing Caitlyn so she can bully them out of lane more effectively. Caitlyn is already a very solid laner and two bonus AD should not be written off. Every auto attack of Poke will eventually add up, and the bigger picture to take note of is that she'll be able to push her lane harder. If both you and your opponent are hitting minions, whoever has more AD and attack speed will shove harder. Being able to shove the minion wave is crucial for Caitlyn, so this is a well-needed and well-appreciated buff. What makes Caitlyn OP is that she's very safe, able to win almost any laning phase, and has very strong scaling. While Caitlyn may not be a hyper carry like Twitch, Jinx, or Kog'Ma, she's still able to deal a lot of damage while being much safer than her counterparts. Her traps and net allow her to protect herself and also make her better suited for sieging than any other marksman. Up next is Jin. We mentioned him last patch, but he also received a small AD buff this patch as well. Like Caitlyn, this buff should help him bully enemies harder in lane. Since his fourth shot automatically crits, it makes his trades a bit heftier. Additionally, Jin's passive allows this bonus AD to scale up as the game progresses, so it's a little bit more than a 2 AD buff later on. To reiterate last episode, Jin's short trade patterns, follow up, and ability to set up ganks makes him a lane bully who can pressure his opponents. As the game progresses, he serves as a utility carry who can help make picks or initiate fights, but that doesn't mean his damage is low at all. While not as consistent as other marksmen, he still does incredible damage, especially while ahead. As always, let's wrap it up with supports. This definitely isn't their first appearance, but Nautilus and Leona are back once again. Their kill pressure in lane, ability to make picks, and reliable CC make them a solid pick for carrying games. What separates Nautilus from other aggressive supports is that his ultimate is point and click. Aside from dealing a decent amount of damage, there's just no way to avoid it. Even if you spell shield it, you'll still have to expend that cooldown and he can follow up with either a hook or an auto attack to lock you down regardless. Leona, on the other hand, increases the damage output of her allies, making her an equally threatening pick. Nautilus's hook range is insanely long, and if you're able to land it, you're almost always guaranteed kills on roams or picks, and can also pose as a terror in lane. Leona functions very similarly. Her primary CC is her Q stun, though it can be more impactful than Nautilus's auto attack, which roots. They both work in a similar way, playing off their hard CC, engage, and abilities to peel for teammates. Pick whichever one you want and whichever one you prefer, and play aggressively in lane, and snowball leads into the other ones by roaming. Our final pick is Bard. He's extremely versatile and also a lane bully. We mentioned him in our underrated picks last patch and feel like we really need to repeat on why we chose him. Aside from his dominant laning, Bard's roaming is really strong throughout the entire game. He'll randomly find chimes that sometimes lead him towards another lane, so while he picks them up, he can use that movement speed bonus to transition into a gank mid or top. If he's level 6, it's even better because with his ultimate, tower diving becomes really easy. Otherwise, he can initiate ganks by alting his targets and repositioning himself to land a Q. Versatility is Bard's biggest strength though. There's just so many Many ways you can use his ultimate and his portal. They can both be used defensively and offensively, so make sure to utilize them based on the situation that you're in. You'll definitely want to pick up Bard if you want to play aggressively in lane, or if you need hard engage later on into the game. As a parting note, make sure to use Bard's ultimate in the jungle or in chokes because its radius is pretty big, and small chokes basically make it impossible to dodge. That's going to conclude this episode of OP Picker Ban. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to help you take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel where we're constantly updating it with new content like this. Good luck on the Rift, and we will see you all next time.